fast arpeggios. Great way to just check. Hello everyone. So I wanted to make a video about exercises. Exercises that have transformed my playing in one way or another. And exercises that I still practice to this day for that reason. Um, and I wanted to share them with you. Feel free to try them out on your own and see if you find them helpful or useful. I'm going to introduce them in no particular order, and we'll just go through them one by one. So the first exercise that I want to talk about is collet. Collet, using the fingers, uh, developing the flexibility in the fingers and strengthening the pinky, and I focused a lot on collet using two etudes, Duport number seven and Piatti number one. Duport number seven, I would focus on playing right at the frog. Just really working the pinky, and then I'll do it the other way. Do two ups, two downs. Things like that. It's super um, helpful for just developing the strength in the pinky, which you need if you don't if you want to avoid tension in the thumb. You don't want to be grabbing with the thumb. Part of the way to combat that is having flexibility in the fingers and strengthen the pinky to balance the bow, uh, like so. Um, the other exercise is uh, using just the fingers in Piatti 1. And if you've seen my Piatti tutorials, you may have seen that I spoke about that in the very first one. Great exercise. Just, you really want to develop this suppleness in the fingers. And at the end of the day, you're not using your fingers so much uh, when you draw just a standard note. It's more of an arm motion, right? But... have this flexibility in the fingers and it allows for such a versatility in your color and your your refinement and bow control and things like that there are certain strokes uh, wouldn't that wouldn't really be possible without this kind of control the big motion is coming from the arm and the back but the fingers will if they're flexible enough, they can. There might be a passive motion, um, but anyway, I'm getting too complicated. That's exercise number one. Exercise number two: double stop patterns. Okay, so not scales, but patterns. So after you do your double stop scales, you can practice your scales however you want, but then incorporate some patterns. Focusing on the smoothness of your shifting. You can do it with thirds too. You can come up with whatever patterns you want. Just going all the way up and then backwards on the way down. like that and you'll be amazed at how that will smoothen out your shifting I practiced that for a few days and 
right away I notice much more fluidity in my shifting. Uh, this, the trick is to really focus on your shifting there, so loose thumb uh, and just smooth. Um, so that's uh, been a transformed exercise, also with octaves. You want to do the same with octaves. Next exercise, sepchik, uh, specifically a bowing exercise, which I believe it's number 29. If you go on IMSLP, type in sepchik bowing exercises, the original is the violin version, but then you go to the arrangements and transcriptions. There's a cello version there, and it's in about six parts. You go to part three. I think all of it's useful, but the one I'm talking about, and the one that I grew up with, is part three. Uh, and it's basically um, a bowing exercise. He marks out the theme in double stops. I think it's something like... strings, um, and then he lays out all sorts of bowing variations, uh, which use different parts of the bow, which require different techniques of string crossings, bow distribution, uh, flexibility in the wrist, for example. So he starts off really simple, just dividing lower half and upper half. Or just the upper half. Complicated. Oh. Uh, string crossing. Sortier. Amazing book of exercises. And once you get the hang of it, you can start applying these same variations to your repertoire. So like Duport 7. this book a lot when I was younger uh, and it really um, taught me about how to use the different parts of the bow and what it feels like to use the different parts of the bow and things like that so uh, that was a very important exercise next exercise Fouillard for shifting uh, there's a big book of technique by Fouillard uh, I think it's number seven and I spent a lot of time on this when I was younger it's written out <laughs> I liked practicing it slowly, starting up bow. So that you can really feel the shift on the bow. Um, also doing the full octave. that vibrato just so you can really hear that it's in tune and he has all sorts of different variations things like that um, there's a whole page of them so I practice that a lot when I when I did it when I was younger I focused a lot on trying to make a circle with my elbow um, but these days I kind of disregard that I don't mess with the motion so much. I just think about the bow. And I just lead with the bow. Uh, I don't mess with my elbows or anything. I think simplicity is best. Um, and that leads me to the next exercise, which is big shifts. Uh, this is a simplified version of shifting, which I got from Britton Smith, who's a virtuoso with a cellist. Look at his videos on YouTube. 
you'll be amazed at what this guy can do. Um, but he has this very simple octave shifting exercise where he just goes up and down the cello in different fingerings. <laughs> And then two octaves. Um, up and down. And if you're ever feeling a little um, insecure about your technique, or you just need to kind of shock your system into gear, it's a great exercise to do. Uh, and um, just five minutes of shifting. Uh, and then you'll, you will come across a big shift in your repertoire, and you'll think nothing of it, because you've practiced countless shifts in your practice room. So that's a really good exercise. Next exercise, slurred staccato, slurred staccato, and this is a great exercise for bow control, for playing with a straight bow, and also just for um, grounding your bow so that you're not, you know, uh, especially under pressure, sometimes your bow can get a little flighty, uh, so you can start off practicing it in scales. <laughs> like that, then you can practice it in your repertoire. Things like that, Britain. Sometimes when I'm just learning a piece like that, Rather than playing it as written, I'll just do a slurred staccato to get the coordination. It's excellent for coordination. Uh, and also just playing with good tone and, and straight bow and all that stuff. So that was a transformative exercise, and I still do that pretty much on a daily basis. And it really keeps my bow arm uh, turning out in the right direction, and just it just feels great. So I would do that. Finally, velocity scales. Sometimes at the end of my scale routine, I'll throw in a couple velocity scales just to see which parts of my technique are a little hairy, you know, um, so it's a great way to see. And um, you can do it legato, uh, let's see. <laughs> really random bowing but I just I like doing it three times over because then you know by the second or third time you, it's ideally the best you, you're making little adjustments on the way um, you can do it separate uh, let's try a different key things like that incredible for your just general cello fitness fast arpeggios great way to just check if everything's in order. So that's a good one. Um, and it's kind of like running, you know? I, I've been running a lot recently, so I've been making these weird connections between the two. But um, if you want to improve overall speed in running, right, you can't just do long, easy runs all the time, right? You have to throw in some tempo runs, speed work, threshold runs, hill sprints. Uh, you know, you gotta throw in, you gotta throw in some speed work into the mix, intervals, things like that. So the same with scales, you can't always just do them slow. Sometimes you've got to throw in some velocity. Uh, otherwise, how do you expect to play fast when you actually get to the fast repertoire? So that's an exercise that has transformed my playing, and I would include it in the exercise category because it kind of is an exercise. If there's anything I've learned uh, throughout the years, and I've had the good fortune of having studied with um, wonderful teachers, each with their own style, each with um, their own unique exercises and way of teaching, and um, from each of them I've learned such a tremendous amount of things. And so over time I've, I've learned to kind of assimilate 
all the knowledge that I've gotten from all of them. I've taken what works, uh, and whatever doesn't work, I, I just don't use it. Um, and you'll find that with whomever you study, I'm sure. Uh, you'll sometimes come across something that might not work for you, it might work for other people. No need to stress about it, just don't use it. Uh, whereas the things that you do find helpful, keep them. These exercises, they've been companions of mine throughout my life and I always find myself coming back to them every now and then just to freshen up my technique and make sure everything's in order. So, I hope you'll find them useful too. Let me know if you have any exercises of your own that you consider a fundamental part of your routine. Alright, that's all for today.